the adjustment wasn't as harsh for me or bad as this was for them, you know, because uh, uh, suddenly I was uh, put in charge of uh, uh, management training department and management training and development, which already had a vice president. So I was went in as his boss, and I guess everybody in that department was stunned. You know, they they didn't quite know how to deal with it at first. In fact, this guy had a nice walnut wall covered office, you know, and in the corner. And I guess they thought he thought I was going to take his office. And I said, well, well you, you want me to move on? I said, no, you stay there. He said, well, where are you going to sit? I said, I don't know yet. So I went down the hall, and I found this little telephone closet. It was about from here to there. And it had all the telephone equipment in it. And I went, I said, I said you know what, that little office down there with the telephone, it's just big enough to have put a little desk in there and chair. And he said, huh? I said, yeah, put a desk and chair in there. So I went down there and I sat in this little telephone, uh, this little telephone room for two weeks. Everybody was like, what is this guy doing, you know? So I was operating out of there. And finally, I made a, I drew a diagram that connected an alcove to his office, which was on the corner and had a door right there so that I could go out that door into his door. Just kind of sectioned it off because it was just an alcove with windows and whatnot. So he said, okay, and he was, he was a pretty good drawer. He said, I'll draw the plans up and give it to them. So I came home, and on Saturday, he was going to have this work done. Something told me to go to work on Saturday. I went to work on Saturday, and they were putting up the walls. But the door was on that end instead of that end. And I said to the, to the guy at work, I said, wait a minute. I said, these plans are not right. And he said, list the plans I got, and he showed them to me, you know, plans that my vice president had given him. He said, I said, no, the door's going to go on that end, on that end, and not that end. And he said, well, these are the plans. I said, look, don't drive another nail. You can do one of two things. You can either put the door on that end or don't do anything. And so he said, it's going to be your office. You know, he said, I don't care. So he put this. So when they came in Monday morning, the door was <laughs> was right where I could get right around here, kind of get right in his office, man. I tell you, there's people or something. But you got to watch them all the time. Why did you choose this, the the phone booth option as your office? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's that word you used, mischievous? <laughs> I knew that they were worried about whether or not I was going to take his office. First place I really didn't want to take us. I didn't want to. I didn't want to remove him, and I hadn't figured out the arrangement yet. You know, so uh, the way it worked. I mean, the, you know, the spacing. So I figured I didn't have to go somewhere. So I went and picked the smallest place I could find, and that no one else was in. And I used that as my office for a week or so, until I could figure out what I was going to do with these people. So. And and clearly you made them very nervous. Like oh, they were, did. oh man, I tell you, like, <laughs> they were very nervous. They stayed nervous for a long time because um, they stay, let's just say they stayed nervous for a while. But they finally got used to me, and, and we built that department up, which they were very proud of, and which overcame any of their nervousness or unhappiness uh, that I was there or whatever. Did you, deter did you discover that, they, that there were a number of uh, stereotypical kind of expectations about you coming in as the first, you know, African-American vice president at Marriott? Uh, yeah, yeah, they didn't know what to expect. To tell you the truth, I didn't know what to expect. So I was playing it one day at a time, to tell you the truth. And 
taking on all comers, you know, good or bad. And you begin to separate the wheat out from the chaff, so to speak, and know who's with you and who's not. And, and those that are not with you, you have to find a way to disarm them, so to speak. And I'd walk in the person's office that they told me was some, some of the some of the blacks would say, you know, he's very prejudiced, you know. I said, oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. So when I get a chance to meet with the person, I go in his office and he start to talk, you know. I said, well, before we get started, I'd like to clear something up. And he said, what's that? He said, I said, there's a, there's a perception outside that you're very prejudiced. Now, if that's true, then, you know, probably not much for us to talk about, it, but he said, <laughs> that's a true story. He said, what? So that, it was my ball game from then on. <laughs> he, got, he couldn't move unless I, you know, like he couldn't make a bad move because I had him covered. So you, you you had figured out different ways to disarm... Disarm people, sure. But it sounds as if it was... Um, it wasn't an in-your-face kind of thing. It was in terms of... It wasn't confrontational. Oh, no. No, it couldn't be confrontational because that just sets up to, to be worse. To be worse. Let's ask a question. But see, a lot of, a, a lot of young folk would, you know... They, they're they used to, if they see something that annoys them or feel that they're being disrespected or whatever, the instinct is to go, you know, stand in front get of them. Get mad. Yeah, get mad and, you know. I was mad. I was mad. But my, my thing was, uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, people is Jackie Robinson. Really true. Even though I'm supposed to get an award from next month or something. And... But he taught me something that you don't get confrontational, you get you get even, you perform. And that's what I try to do.